Good morning everyone and a warm welcome to the ODPP Cafe. Today we are live at the YCTC committee, the Youth Correctional and Training Center. I hope I got it right. Uh, we are shooting live from committee and we'd like you to join us. We have been discussing about CSR and mentorship and today is a culmination of that discussion. We want to know what the ODPP does and uh, of course its partners. As always, we welcome you to join us on Facebook uh, at, the OD at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We also welcome you to join us on Twitter at ODPP underscore KE. And on YouTube, we welcome you to subscribe and gong a like, as we say, uh, at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. Welcome, and as always, we start with, uh, with a quick roundup of the courts. And my name is Anita Onuko. I will be your host. So quickly into the courts, uh, like we always say, the disclaimer is that this is not everything. This is just a glimpse of what has been happening. Of course, there's so much more we can't capture it in this program. But definitely, if you have a question of what has been going on and you want to ask the ODPP, you can ask us on our social, on our social media uh, platforms and you'll get somebody to respond to you. So we start with the first case. Um, it's about the businessman Mukuri and Gamau. I know you've seen this again on, uh, on other media platforms. Gamau was fined 721 million for theft of uh, Youth Enterprise Development Fund cash. This is the guy who got uh, quite a hefty sentence. Uh, he was accused of, uh, of, of defrauding the Youth and Enterprise Development Fund. Uh, a transfer of 180 million. I don't even know whether I can read this figure correctly because it's quite a mouthful. But you can see the figure there. So uh, the court directed that the accused, uh, Ngamau, uh, to further compensate the YDF of that amount, 180 million, 364, 789 shillings for the loss. Ngamau was charged with five counts of conspiracy to commit an economic crime, unlawful acquisition of public property, and making a false document. The prosecution through Eva Kanyuria opposed the request by Ngamau for an uncustodial sentence, stating that the charges against the accused are severe given the amount of money stolen from, pub, from the public. The prosecution presented a total of 32 witnesses. So this guy, I think, is the one who went into, was given a sentence of 27 years and some fines that he needs to pay for this, uh, for corruption. Uh, the next case is about uh, the Monica Kimani murder trial. The prosecution led by Catherine Mwaniki and uh, Gikohe Geshui Yesterday presented two witnesses in the case where, uh, where Joey and Jackie Maribe are charged of murder of Monica Kimani. Uh, there was Brian Kasaine, a businessman and a farmer. He confirmed to the court that, uh, he confirmed to the court, uh, just a minute, just a minute, I've lost my, my truck. Give me a sec. So Brian Kasaine, a businessman and a farmer, confirmed to the court that he lent Joey his firearm and he also noticed a hole in the wall of the two accused persons' house with a spent firearm cartridge beneath it. He told the court that Joey had handled the gun, his gun three times. So these were friends, but now he's a prosecution witness. The 18th witness, Teddy Mugambe Kihara, head of surveillance team at Kenya Airports Authority at JKIA, presented a total of nine portable media clips obtained from their security systems that depicted the disease activities at JKIA. The case has been scheduled for hearings between 25th and 26th October and 11th and 15th November 2021. Uh, Lady Justice Nzioka also noted that there is a pending ruling of an application by the prosecution to be determined virtually on 12th, 12th of October. So we'll still follow up on that and, and give you updates as they come uh, because this is quite one of those cases that took the country by, by surprise. The other case is an, is an anti-corruption case. The anti-corruption court has put Transport Chief Administrative Secretary Chris Obure on his defense over the 1.3 billion Anglo leasing graph scandal. This happened when he was a finance minister in the former Moe's government. Obure, alongside former information PS Kyungo, or is it Chungo, Samuel Bundotich, and former Postmaster General Francis Chahonyo, are charged with the abuse of office on breach of abuse of office and breach of office in procurement of 850 million data network services. This is quite an old case that surfaced to the surprise of everyone. Uh, so Chris Obura is still a CAS and uh, we'll see how this one uh, pans out. Uh, he has a case to answer according to the court. The hearing of the case commenced uh, in 2015 and a total of 27 witnesses including government officials, accountants in the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Transport testified in court. It will be mentioned again in October 8th for the accused to start giving their defense. They are out on a cash bail 
of one million each. As always, we say, when we learned about bail and bonds, it's not that you're free and, uh, and you don't have a case to answer, but of course there are conditions put for you as you wait for your case to progress. Uh, the other case is about a man charged with impersonating a KDF officer and defrauding a woman of 350,000 in a fake KDF jobs. I think we need to be aware of these things because they come up uh, most of the times when the, when the security forces are recruiting. You are asked to pay money to get either your son or your relative in. So you give somebody a lot of money to get uh, a job and more often it ends up badly because you never get a job anyway. So Vincent Mutoni is accused of obtaining the money jointly with two others from Cyprin Owol on January 2nd, 2019. They falsely pretended that they were in a position to secure a job for Owol's son. Mutoni is also accused of presenting himself as a public service officer employed by the KDF, a fact he knew to be false. He denied both the charges and was, re was released on a 100,000 bond. The case will proceed on October 27th, 2021. So that will uh, definitely continue. And then this other case that also just um, uh, took, the, took the country by storm. A couple got life imprisonment for drug trafficking. A Meru Law Court uh, senior principal magistrate, Thomas Moragori, sentenced a couple to life imprisonment for trafficking in narcotics. James Muthiora, Elias Karinta, and his wife, Frida Karemi, will also pay a fine of 4.6 million each or serve a further five years in prison as prescribed in Section 4A of the Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Control Act. This was quite surprising. And this was a case of weed. So don't think uh, narcotics are, 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 are treated differently. When it is narcotics, it is narcotics. So they got life imprisonment for this. The prosecution led by James Kenyua presented the court with evidence that the couple had in November 2018 in North Menti. They were found in possession of 103 kgs of cannabis, sativa, valued at 3 million shillings. Uh, the couple has two weeks to appeal the sentence. Again, the right of appeal is in the constitution and we've discussed about it here. So we'll just get to know how that goes on from here. So those are just some of the cases that were from the courts that piqued our interest and we thought we'd share with you. And we're glad you're watching. Again, feel free to comment on our, on our sections on, on social media and get your questions or your concerns answered. And of course, if they are quite sensitive, then somebody will reach out to you in your, in your DM or maybe they can, you can call the ODP and get a, a direct response from them. So today, like I said, we are going to be talking about CSR and mentorship. When you talk about CSR and mentorship, we always imagine it's for the private sector because a lot of them talk about shared growth agenda. They want to invest in the communities in which they operate in. But today it's different. You're talking about CSR and mentorship from a government perspective. The ODPP and the prisons department, they're also involved in their own CSR and mentorship. And like I mentioned earlier, we are at the YCTC, a correction center for the youth. Uh, 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 this one is for boys, and of course there's another one for girls. So this one is for boys, I think, between aged uh, 14 and 17 where they're brought in uh, to wait for their cases or uh, they're in remand uh, waiting for their cases to progress. So with me in our studio, of course, you're outside today. We're hoping it doesn't rain. Uh, in my studio, I have guests who are going to just take us through about what they've been doing as mentorship and as CSR to see how to improve the lives of these boys who are now, I believe, in conflict with the law. And we'll get that definition a bit later from ODPP. So I'll want them to introduce themselves. And of course, we start with the lady in as much as she's in the middle. Karibu sana. Good morning, viewers. Uh, my name is Caroline Karemi. I work for the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Um, we have been running a mentorship program at YCTC, and we are glad that you're watching. Please continue. Maybe you should also say you're the head of children. <laughs> yes, uh, I had the children's division and the anti GM unit at ODPP. And that's why we are here, working with children. Yes. yes. And I hope you remember when we were with uh, Carol the other time talking about children and the law, a very interesting one. And I hope this one will also be as interesting as the last one. Uh, can you send Dr. Wahome? Hey, uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, my name is uh, Wahome Ngari. Uh, I'm a medical doctor. Uh, but today uh, I wear a different hat. Um, I'm the moderator of the Catholic Men Association in our parish, uh, Shrine of Mary Help of Christians. I am involved with the Kenya Christians Professional um, uh, Forum. Uh, today I'm here about boy mentorship. Mm. Mm. So you told us about the boy child. Yes. Karibu sana superintendent, we are your guests today. So maybe mm. just introduce yourself. Good morning viewers. 
I'm very much grateful to host the ODPP at my institution. My name is uh, SP Simon Ojuangome. So today is a very wonderful day in our institution because the mentorship has been going on for quite some time and it has helped a lot of a lot of our boys. Yeah. Karibu sana to the show. So maybe we'll start with you because where and your head, where and What is YCTC? And also just feel, feel free to speak in English and Kiswahili, guys, because it is meant to be a show for the for the people. Okay. Yeah. So what is YCTC? YCTC is a Youth Corrective Training Center. Mm -hmm. It was started in 1963, and it's the only one in Kenya. And the purpose of starting it was that. Uh, the youths were to be deterred from doing offenses in early stage. So the idea was that uh, the sentence would be sharp, short uh, sentence mm -hmm. so that uh, they can be taken through vigorous training to deter them to do offense. Mm -hmm. And then later it was uh, realized that uh, the youths were also being contaminated with the old criminals when they are being put in remand while they are waiting cases, their cases. Mm -hmm. So the remand section was uh, introduced. Mm -hmm. So the remands uh, in uh, in uh, the YC the YCTC boys are convicted for only four months, oh. and then they stay for that four months, and then they are being taken through uh, behavior change, uh, drug and substance abuse, and also uh, those who are who have committed uh, defilement they are taken. Uh, through the sexual training, the sexual offender training, mm -hmm. and then also we take them through um, knowing what uh, 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 social uh, life skills, mm -hmm. uh, so that they can know how to them to empower themselves while they are inside, and then when they also we take them through entrepreneurship mm -hmm. courses, short courses, so that we will help them to. Not to go to not to go back to the crime. Yeah, crime. Yes. I didn't get about the four months. What is it? A, four, so they stay here for four months as the their cases continue, or what does the four months mean? We have two two cases, uh -huh. uh, two category of mm -hmm. of prisoners here. Mm -hmm. One is for the YCTC. Those are the convicted ones. Mm -hmm. They are being con convicted of uh, doing offenses against the law. Mm -hmm. And then the, the sentence only four months, mandatory four months. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so after that, they are being they go back. Go back. They are being reintegrated back to the society. society. Yes. Is this the same as an approved school? No. So there is an approved school. There's an approved school. Oh, so it's different. Yeah. So ah, these okay. are prison, mm -hmm. and also it acts as like a postal institution partly, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, we usually contain them in humane custody and also empower them with skills and also to reintegrate them back mm. yes okay. because for a, a child to be committed in in YCTC there are, there must be a probation report so the probation report uh, tell us who the boy is mm -hmm. how he has undergone how he was staying in the society so when he comes, we put them on the individual treatment plan. Okay. Yeah, so depending on the case that he has come in. Okay. Yes. Oh, interesting. So, Madam Karimi, what, what role does YCTC play in the larger criminal uh, justice sector? I mean, how does it play in? Yeah, I think um, the first role it plays a role in interact between interacting with us as ODPP is because it demands the children when conflict to the law. So that means uh, when the children are brought to us and we take them through the court process, that means we charge them. Um, they need a place to stay as the case is ongoing. Mm -hmm. So if they are not, they are not able to be granted bail, then they come here and they're housed here. So they're held in demand here, mm -hmm. and then for the duration of the case. Mm -hmm. And then upon conclusion of the case, again they're housed here. So as you said, it's a Boston institution. So the boys are here. Why is it called Boston? Uh, not, Boston, not Boston. Mm. Yeah, it has um, it has the Boston institution aspect where it houses the boys as they are rehabilitated. I mean, what does a Boston mean? What a, what does the word Boston mean? So a uh, Boston institution is the name given for institutions for children. Uh -huh. Children are not held in like committee maximum okay. prison. Okay. Okay. So, um, Boston is not a Boston institution, but we do have Boston institutions okay. in Kenya. 
All right. So when the case has been concluded and the child has been found that they are guilty of the offense, we don't say convicted, mm -hmm. the truth is mm -hmm. they have been found guilty of the offense, mm -hmm. then they need to go and be placed in a uh, somewhere where they can be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. We don't again say sentence when it oh. comes to mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So they are committed to both the institutions. Oh, so Boston institution, I would say, is the equivalent of an adult prison. So you can move from here to a Boston institution. Yes, you can move from no from here. Yeah. If you're reminded, of mm -hmm. course, and the case is concluded, mm -hmm. the court can uh, send you, commit you mm -hmm. to any place. You can be committed for probation, or mm -hmm. you can be committed into a Boston institution. Mm -hmm. Probation, of course, again, to Fungo yeah, yeah. So probation office is actually committed. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, women at home, and then there's yeah. they are watching over you. Probation, you know, but you can be sent into an institution mm -hmm. uh, which I've said is an equivalent of a prison yeah. but we know we don't imprison children, children. Mm -hmm. so the foster institution is the one that now uh, houses these boys when they have been found guilty of an offense. Okay, I know I've discussed this in the show before but maybe for the sake of those who never watched it just a brief uh, distinction between a child in conflict with the law and a child in contact with the law yeah so a child in conflict with the law is a child who has come into, into the system because they have committed an offence. And um, say an offence, we mean a pengine ame, ameiba, mm. ame mabisi, you know, yeah. zile ambazo ameunja sheria. Mm. So that is what we call a child in conflict with the law. So they're in the system because they need to have their case heard mm. or they need to be, you know, there are still alternatives. They don't necessarily have to go through the court system. Mm. So that is a child who has committed an offence. Mm -hmm. The one in contact with the law mm -hmm. has not committed an offence, but they're in the system because they have interacted um, maybe with an offence or something has gone wrong in their system mm -hmm. and they need to be protected okay. by um, the state because the state has the obligation of protecting children. Yeah, yeah. And by this, I will give an example of um, maybe children who have been neglected by their parents. So the parent has committed an offence, they have neg neglected mm. their child. Now the child, being the victim, needs to be protected. Yeah. So they come into contact with the law by virtue of the offence that has been committed against them and by the state having the obligation to have to protect them. Mm. So the ones in contact with the law, of course, will not be kept to the ones who are in conflict. And that's why you'll find them in the, the rescue centres, the children's So these the ones are in home. conflict with the law? The ones at YCTC are the ones who are in conflict with oh, the law. We okay. don't have any child here right. uh, who is in contact. contact. So how old are they? What is the age difference, the age range? The age of the Romantis, we have uh, 14 to but less than 18, mm -hmm. but with the convicted one are 17, but less than 21 years of age. Ah, yes. and they are out here. Mm. Okay. So, Doctor, we bring into the conversation the boy child. Yes. <laughs> what about the boy child? Uh, what is what is going on? Are they really under siege, like we say nowadays? Did we take too long protecting the girl child, and we forgot about the boy child? The the boy child is actually a, a victim of uh, of uh, broken fatherhood. Um, if if you want a solution, in a nutshell, is fatherlessness. Uh, and when we talk about fatherlessness, uh, we are saying daddy is absent in the child's life. Or we are saying daddy is there, we call it passive. Daddy is there, but he does not take charge of discipline. You can commit crime, you can do good things, he will not open his mouth to either say you did a good thing or you condemn you for doing a wrong thing. Uh, he will not rebuke or correct you, he's just there. He's called passive. Or daddies can be abusive. Okay, so any child who um, uh, grows up in that environment, whether boys or girls, if, you, if uh, studies have shown that 70-80% um, of children who are in prison have a, f a problem with their father. But there can be father, other father figures and there are strong women as well. Who bring out the, 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 the thing is, uh, uh, the man in a boy is, can only be brought up by a man. Uh, there is an issue about mentorship uh, that the woman cannot provide for a child. Mm -hmm. Even um, those who are single mothers and the strong women mm -hmm. are always encouraged to make sure there is a father figure mm -hmm. in the life of their children. Mm -hmm. So it could be your father, it could be your brother or an uncle, mm -hmm. but the boy child really needs a, a male mentor. Mm -hmm. It is the only way it works. So we, we have a problem with uh, fatherlessness. 
and it is um, every time that he is broken he creates broken boys mm -hmm. and every time the boys are broken then we have uh, a big mess mm -hmm. uh, in the society so um, fatherlessness or the uh, breaking down of the family is is really the root cause the root cause of all this yes oh, okay quite interesting mm -hmm. so madam caro you work for the odpp you were involved in prosecuting these children but then now you're mentoring them what 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 drove odp to, to start this mentoring program all right um i would say is it's because we interacted with them long enough for them to understand that beyond the offense that has been committed by this child their underlying issues that is that pull and uh, trigger factors to why these children are committing these crimes yeah um, <clears throat> at this age you expect they should be in school obeying the law doing the right thing I mean 14 years yes 14 years is quite young yet you will find they will commit quite um, very serious offenses and you know that is not ordinary with a child mm. so because we have we had interacted with them long enough mm -hmm. and many times we would get even children officers report probation officers um, report which were giving us the background on these children we realized there's that aspect of their social life um, that can be dealt with as a way of preventing them from coming into the system of course we can't say we are happy to prosecute children it is a job that we must do but of course we understand the reason is because we want to rehabilitate yeah. so the understanding of that background the social background of these children and and seeing that the issues that are forcing them to come, pulling them into the criminal world, actually social issues that can be dealt with is what made us realize we can do it as a uh, social responsibility. Mm -hmm. We can give back mm -hmm. to society by impacting the lives of these boys in a different way. Mm -hmm. So we realized um, if we can, you know, have sessions with them up outside court because you know in court one at one they will meet some ya mashtaka and atuchukia tutaki vizuri they see you they like you are so they are telling things about me now you want yes. to tell me i can be nice do they yeah. like hold grudges against you because and that's one of the reasons why women did this mentorship mm -hmm. to break down that barrier that misunderstanding yeah. that the reason why we are prosecuting them is because we want to end their lives that our intentions are for them to suffer mm -hmm. So it was just to show the human face of prosecution. Mm -hmm. We might prosecute you, but we do understand that you're a child. Uh, most of the times, why you're doing certain issues is maybe biological issues. Yeah. You know, your rationale and judgment as a child is not well developed, mm -hmm. or there are factors at home, environmental issues mm -hmm. that are forcing you out into the streets. And mm -hmm. when you meet there with your peers, there's peer pressure, and you end up in that. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we decided to have that social impact on these children and see how we can train them and mentor them and you know give them life skills give them a different perspective of life uh, you know like coach them on how to make decisions and hopefully uh, change their lives in what we call therapeutic jurisprudence where you give therapy to the child even as you prosecute them mm -hmm. Yes, so that's really a carrot and stick. Yes, <laughs> like, yes, but uh, not so much the, the beating. Mm -hmm. That is the perception we were trying to break down yeah. when we were doing this uh, mentorship. Yeah. That the final intention of any prosecution is a whole child. So, whichever way that's you approach. That's to comprehend, even for me as a parent. Yeah. Because, like you're saying, our socialization is that when you see a child as quasi in a committee. Yeah. At talk at the same person, mm. but are you saying that it is possible that they come out different? Yes, reform absolutely. If if there is a category of uh, the population that is very easy to work with and mold and to give a second chance, it is the children. Wow, I, yes. wow. So, um, uh, Mr. S uh, Superintendent SP, let me say SP because it's a very big word. So, SP, what are some of the the crimes you've seen here? What is the worst crime you've seen here? For a child. We have murder cases, robbery with violence, talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also defilement. Yes. Children defiling children. Yes. Very difficult to comprehend. But then um, my question again is because these institutions were created so that they don't get mixed up with the older criminals. Yes. You know, then they get again involved in other crimes. Is it the same here? Are they maybe separated according to crime or they are just together? They are just together. You get to know what the other person did, Emma, they are not allowed to talk about it? 
So at their own free time, they, 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 they do talk because they intermingle with one another. And we also, at times when we, we try to lecture them on the life skills, and we also take them through uh, world behavior change, so we, we, we are with them together. Mm. Yes. Don't you worry about peer pressure? Peer pressure is there. And <laughs> Even it's the, here. It's the key because the majority of them, you, find you can get uh, two or three from one area, which means they, 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 they collude to do a crime. Mm. But uh, with that one, we, we, we just tell them the, the danger of peer pressure mm. so that they come out when they know that uh, putting somebody's shoes when you are not ready <laughs> is not good. He will pay for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. so peer mm. pressure, even in a social context, is one of those things we've known over time as you grow up. Yes. But then now the social media mm. and there's still that whole thing of peer pressure. What do you tell them about peer pressure? The thing is that as a society, we've, uh, we've tended to connote peer pressure as a bad thing. Oh. But peer pressure can be both positive and negative. Pressure is not positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let, me, let me try and explain. Yeah. The, the idea would be mm -hmm. if uh, children are pressurizing each other yeah. to do the wrong thing, then that is not good. Mm -hmm. If children are pressurizing each other to do the right thing, mm -hmm. then that is good. So the question is, what is it that they are driving towards? Now, um, a child who has uh, a, a, a good self-esteem and a child who has a sense of purpose, uh, they, they, have, they know what they would like to do, they, want, uh, they know they would like to make a difference, would not succumb to peer pressure. And unfortunately for a child to have a good uh, self-esteem and for a child to, to have a sense of purpose, then they, they would need to be affirmed. And that's where parental issues come in. So if, if, we, are, if we are not careful to, to secure the family, to stop the breaking down of families. Then we have children who have poor self-esteem, they have no sense of purpose, and those are very easy to wave around. And therefore, if they get into the wrong company, uh, then a peer pressure that is negative then becomes a major issue. Mm. Uh, so the, the, the question is, who will this child, um, who will then mentor this child? Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if home is not, uh, is not stable and I have run out into the street, I'm still looking for a man to mentor me and the fellow I find is, is a crook or a thief, then mm -hmm. chances are that I will fall to that um, the negative. negative peer yeah. pressure. So if we have children who um, have good self-esteem, who have a sense of purpose and they're the majority, then they would take that child and push them in the right direction. That, that's how I want to At what age would a child know their purpose? The, the, the interesting thing is that um, if you ask your child who is five years old or three, uh, maybe six, seven, mm -hmm. what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. They will always say something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a good question for parents to ask mm -hmm. because it kind of prepares a child uh, that there is something beyond this. Mm -hmm that I'm going to grow up and then I need to apply myself. Mm -hmm. It's the same time when we talk about talents. Mm -hmm. You see your child can do a bit of painting, you mm -hmm. encourage them to do that. They can play an instrument, you encourage them to do that. Because they are trying to find their skills and what they are good at, and the idea is to try and encourage those skills to grow so that they may be able to apply them in life. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, it's really um, a very basic parental issue uh, that can be easily put a, a, in school mm -hmm. so long as we all agree to, to work together towards a certain goal. Mm. Mm. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm wondering, uh, so, uh, back to you again, mm -hmm. what is a day like here? Is it like boarding school? Do you wake up? Do you go to class? What do you do when you wake up, when they wake up, for example? Well, there's uh, a lot of activities that we do mm -hmm. because the structure, uh, the way it was made, so that uh, the youth, uh, they are very funny because uh, you have to engage them. Yes. So if you don't engage them with the good morals, they will engage you with the bad morals. <laughs> exactly. So we, uh, exactly. as soon as we wake up at uh, 6.30, mm -hmm. that is the morning unlock, mm -hmm. then we go to vigorous training. Uh, uh, physical, uh, physical uh, oh, fitness. Yeah. So that after that, it's when they take porridge. 
And then from taking forage, so we have a demonstration farm uh, outside. Some do, uh, the, the convicted ones do, are being taken to the demonstration farm to milk our dairy cow. Oh. We will go to have, we also have a dairy goat. Oh. We also have pigs. Yes, we rear pigs and then we also have a vegetable farm. So we give them farm skills and also skills to rear goats, mm -hmm. to rare dairy mm -hmm. uh, cows. And then for the remandis, after that one, now they do their personal cleanliness, mm -hmm. where they stay mm -hmm. and also they wash their clothes and then wait for those who are uh, who do who do have court mention they are being taken to where the uh, the courts uh, are being mentioned, mentioned. yeah are so they allowed are they allowed visits no be, due to covid the visit was oh uh, they were stopped yes. but before they were allowed visits yes their families come yes wow mm. quite interesting <laughs> uh, so madam caro i just I, I looked at this and i thought we should look at it um a journey of a child in conflict with the law so i thought i should ask you just direct questions like who goes to juvenile court do you have juvenile juvenile court here in kenya yes we do yes we do mm -hmm. we have we have two specialized children's courts mm -hmm. we no longer call them juvenile oh courts. it's children's courts yeah children's I should courts. Learn. <laughs> yes so yeah. we have the first one in milimani mm -hmm. Uh, Upper Hill, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a full-fledged children's court um, with, um, you know, the child-friendly court setup. It has holding areas for the children mm -hmm. as they wait to get into the courts. They have trained magistrates who are specialized on children matters. Mm -hmm. And then we have the other one in Tononoka, mm -hmm. uh, Mombasa, mm -hmm. uh, with about the same facilities. Mm -hmm. But apart from having two physical specialized courts, uh, magistrates are all gazetted to be children's magistrates. So you'll find that even in other court stations, the magistrates there can handle children cases. Mm -hmm. I think the only difference then is that, um, you know, priority is given in these specialized courts and there are good facilities for these children. But we also know of other court stations that are trying to make themselves a bit um, child friendly. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, how old should I be? I mean, what, what qualifies my arrest in terms of age? All right. How old should I be? So in Kenya, if you're under the age of eight years and below, you cannot be arrested or prosecuted mm. for any criminal offense. Mm. If you're the age of, um, below the age of 12, there's a presumption that you did not know what you were doing when you were committing the offense. And that means there's no, it, it's not automatic for you to be prosecuted, but there's a duty on the prosecutor to first show that you knew what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So once the prosecutor is able to show that, then you can be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. So that means we'll have, <coughs> generally have children from the age of 11 mm -hmm. going up, but you might have the ones 9, 10, mm -hmm. if the presumption mm -hmm. has been shown that you knew what you were doing. Mm -hmm. So that's the age range up to, when you're 18, you're an adult. Yeah. So 17. So what if you turn 18 in the middle of your case, you immediately get transferred mm -hmm. into the adult space? No. <laughs> no, uh, so the law in Kenya is the age at which you are when you're committing the offense ah. is the age that will take that is used. Okay. So even if you're 17 years and 11 months and then you commit an offense, if your birthday is next month, you're mm -hmm. still considered as a, as as a, a child. child. Okay. Yes. So then now um, I've been arrested. Now what? Should I? Can I call the police? Can I tell the police everything? How do I even get to know I need a lawyer? I mean. Yeah. Then suddenly I'm in a police station. What should I do? All right. So if you if you are arrested mm -hmm. by the police, um, I think mtoto kwanza nafaa waambie mimi na zataka mzazi wangu apigiwe simu aambiwe niko hapa. All right. They have a right mm -hmm. to have their parents notified. Um, and then if the parent comes, we, we do understand about the vulnerability of a child. The child might not think so much into the context of my rights mm -hmm. or uh, my right to a legal yeah. representative. The, their their mind freeze. might, yes, they yeah. will freeze. Mm -hmm. we, we all, we have been children yeah. and we have children in our houses. Yeah. We know how they are. Yeah. They are vulnerable. And that's why there's a duty on the stakeholders, mm -hmm. the police officer, yeah. the children officer, the prosecutor, know that you are the adult and mm -hmm. you must protect this child. So it is not for the child to prompt you 
as the state officer, as the police officer, for you to provide them with mm -hmm. a legal office, with a legal representative. Mm -hmm. It is for you to ensure they have. Mm -hmm. So kama wewe ni mtoto ndio umeshikwa, waambie unataka mzazi kwanza apigwe simu akuje kabla hata hujasema chochote. So when the parent comes, uh, they should be able to uh, get you an advocate or be there during the questioning. Mm -hmm. If a parent is not available, a children officer is one of the officers recognized in law who can stand in for the, for child, the child where there is no parent or a guardian. Okay. But there should be an adult with this child, either one close to them who is a relative parent or a children officer. Mm -hmm. um, and so when the questioning is happening, the parent should be there mm -hmm. or the children officer mm -hmm. should be present. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lawyer, then a children's officer is presented to you? Yes, should you know, be the there. the police should call on the children officers to come? Yes. Ah, ah yes. okay, okay. And then, so you're put in, say, a detention center. So you wait for your case to be heard. Who tells you your case is, is ongoing? How do they know? Kesho ni Monday, Ms. Kuyangia court mentioned. Are they announced? Are they told? All right. So, um, the, every child in Kenya has a right to legal representation. Mm -hmm. um, that has not been the case for the longest time. We have been having children who come to court. They don't have an advocate to represent them at the, from the time of plea all the way. And they have been representing mm -hmm. themselves, themselves mm -hmm. which is a very serious um, infringement of their rights. Mm -hmm. uh, last, uh, is it 2019 or 2020, the DPP took this up seriously because, you know, we are the ones in court with these children as prosecutors mm -hmm. and you doing a case with a child it is a very unfair situation yeah. so the DPP did take it up with the Chief Justice the outgoing mm -hmm. uh, Chief Justice and um, he, there were directions that were sent out practice directions for the prosecutors mm -hmm. on what the prosecutor should do when they get to court and they realize the child does not have a legal representative or what the magistrate should do then when that issue is raised mm -hmm. to them but then the child should have the legal representative uh, present to them. You if you realize the child has no representative. What we, we, the practice directions that the DPP sent out is the prosecutor is supposed to raise it with the magistrate. Mm by form of an application, a formal application, that the, right, the child has a right to legal representation and for the court to proceed and provide the legal representative. Mm. And the court is supposed to make a ruling on that, that mm. let us wait for a certain number of days mm. and we'll find a legal representative. Mm. Because we do know we have the um, legal aid mm. services. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in Kenya we have the pro bono services which are supposed to work for this child. Oh. So there is what the There's judiciary whole, on yeah. DPP are doing to ensure that every child in the system mm -hmm. has an advocate with them right from the beginning mm -hmm. all the way at the expense of the state. It is not for the child to pay. Mm -hmm. Unless of course they can afford to pay for the advocate they have the right to an advocate of their choice. Of their choice. Yes. Is there a duration as to uh, for children cases? Is there a set duration that they should happen between? Is there like a, a set duration, a timeline that cases should be concluded for children? Yes, uh, in the Children's Act, it has set a timeline of uh, six months. Uh, we try as much uh, to keep within the six months. And the reason being, uh, you know, a child's life is still in transit. You know, yeah. they have so much going and waiting for them. You do not want to keep them in the system for too long because when the child is in the system, a lot stops for them. Yeah. Their education stops. You know, they are separated from their parents and that separation has an effect on the child. Yeah. So you want them in and out as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are challenges that stop that from uh, yeah. happening, yeah. but uh, it should be on every stakeholder to ensure that they do these cases in the shortest time possible. Mm. Okay, um, all right. Oh, so, Dr. now we, we talk about mentorship. Yes. Does it work? You know, when, when a private organization engages in CSR, mm. it's normally mm. for quote-unquote selfish reasons, mm. for just lack of a better term. Mm. It's always for show and tell. Mm. But now, when you are engaged in this, um, mm. in this whole uh, children and the system thing, mm. it's for social impact. Mm -hmm. So, is there impact? Is, is there, does it work when you mentor them? Does it work? Do you have cases of children who are actually reformed because of mentorship that took place? The, the, I, I have not been involved uh, very long um, um, with this program. We, we've done one session. Yeah. Uh, but um, when, when you find what power, what, um, what um, information does to those children, you begin to appreciate that uh, it is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. 
And um, the DPP, just like all the other investors in CSR, is also being selfish uh, because they want to reduce the number of children being prosecuted. Uh, therefore, it's a good in, 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 uh, investment when you say that um, it is painful to prosecute a child and um, part of what they are suffering is brokenness from their own home, is lack of uh, proper mentoring, so they didn't even know. The people who are leading them to crime are adults, adult men uh, who they went to, to hang out with because they were lacking a father figure. Uh, then you're saying if you invest in these children and if we strengthen their personalities and if they are able to see why they're broken and they're able to see the brokenness in their mentors, then they'll be able to make different choices. And in that sense, then uh, we will not need to prosecute children. So it is, it's, a, it's a very good investment um, and, uh, and the dividends will definitely show. Uh, you also are saying that if you, if you transform that child and you can keep tabs on them, mm -hmm. then chances are that in the muta, they, they will also do a good job for you. Mm. Because they'll be telling people, I've been there, I've done that, and um, it doesn't pay. Mm. Yeah. You have mm. an alumni, definitely. People, children who've come here, they've gone. Do you have cases of those who actually reformed because they were here, and they learned now to operate better outside there? Yes, yeah. there's so many. Mm -hmm. yes. Like, a, a, like last year, we had uh, one who was here, yeah. And he, 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 he went and uh, he went to school and then uh, qualified to be a lawyer. Oh. So before starting practicing, he brought the whole of his class to see where he started his. Uh, Wow. Yeah. So he, he came and they talked to the, 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 the they talked to the boys uh, about uh, his life yeah. and also they played football together. And then the boys were very much happy. Oh, nice. Yes. There are some also who are businessmen. They have come to talk to them. Uh, we have we have that uh, that program, the mentorship program. Oh, by they the do, former? Yeah, yeah they, 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 they do come. Like uh, the ones also through crime CIPOA, mm -hmm. they do come because the, the crime CIPOA is involved with the, the ex, those who have been in. Detained. <laughs> so they mm -hmm. come and mentor them because so all is not lost. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, there's also next time. So the, what what matters is that uh, their their mindset should mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. and then they should know mm -hmm. where they come from and where they are going. It's very much important. So, so it, it works. Yes, it works. But then, of course, there are the negatives. When you read about rehabilitation of children, you, you, you read about something called, I think, I don't know, recidivism or something. They yes. go back to the same. Yeah. So do you have also those, those repeat offenders? They are, but... No, they, we are we no repeat offenders, <laughs> they don't come back. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we also host the first offenders only. Only? Yes. So where do repeat offenders repeat go? Repeat offenders, uh, they go to bigger population. Oh my! Mm. But where they, 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 they when when are? when 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 they are their age reaches eighteen, so they go back. <laughs> no, but when what if you repeat at say you are here at fourteen again you were sixteen you were found with something else you can you come back here? No, but with with with, with remandis there's yeah. no problem. They can come back. They can come back. <laughs> remandis they do come back, but uh, with the convict mm -hmm. no. But you see, like Doctor is saying, there are some whose life out there is so difficult that then they prefer to just be here. So they uh, just do something so that they are brought back here and go and are comfortable. You uh, have those. As the doctor said, the yeah. family setup is a, a bit uh, problem, yeah. problematic to, yeah. to us because of dysfunctional families is a, a problem. Yeah. And also single parents is also a problem. Uh -huh. So you find that and also drug and substance abuse is also a problem. Because you find that the, the, the boys come from uh, family who all are drunk, drunkard. Mm -hmm. So somebody to put something before the boy to eat is a problem. Mm -hmm. So you find the boy now try to yeah. steal so that he can have something to eat. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when they are here, we also you find that there are some boys who so who would want to go to back to school mm -hmm. because they have the ability. Mm -hmm. So with that, with that, we we identify, we try to, 
like Mamlaka Church, Mamlaka Hill Church has helped us a lot. Ah. Uh, paying school fees for the boys, the boys who are coming from dysfunctional families. Ah. And uh, like in this year, there's a boy who's, going, who's joining uh, Mount Nini University at Kimbadela, at oh. He got C+. Okay. Yeah, he was here. He was here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to know there are, there's a good uh, army of alumni um, <laughs> who have reformed. They are here. Yeah. So we, we have also school mm -hmm. here. Oh, you have a school here? I didn't here. mention that. We yeah. have a, a, a school because we don't want to terminate a boy's life yeah. simply mm -hmm. because he's here. Yeah. We have a normal school uh, and we have uh, teachers who, uh, who have been employed by uh, prison and they are uh, qualified teachers. The school is here within YCC. The school is here within mm -hmm. YCC, and we also have uh, mechanicals. We have all tailoring. This is so mm -hmm. nice. May yeah. I just come back? We have tailoring, <laughs> a section. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you just cut me short when I was explaining because I started with the outside. Oh, yes. So the inside ones, we have also a school uh -huh. that, function, that is functioning, and also we have a computer class. Mm -hmm. And we also have a tailoring section mm -hmm. and also mechanic section. So those who are not going to, to school outside the parties, yeah. they are involved in school. And also we have a, what uh, we have partnered with uh, so many NGOs those who, you, who would come yeah. to lecture mm -hmm. the boys. Mm -hmm. uh, we have counseling rooms. They, 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 there are some universities uh, students who are being attached here mm. uh, so they are do they, are, they do counseling to our boys mm -hmm. yes so it's time table is just uh, the whole week is being uh, it's busy it's busy mm. because uh, like the the odpp took thursday mm -hmm. we have got uh, monday's uh, crime c power <laughs> and we have uh, another church organization who are also doing counseling mm -hmm. yeah now we have got the park, the Zoom, the, 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 the park mindset education. Mm -hmm. Yes, they usually take Tuesday and Wednesday. Honestly, yes. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. See, after all majority, that, majority. Mm -hmm. when I came here, yeah, when I came here, the, the boys were very drunk mm -hmm. and they were very much in discipline, mm -hmm. and the stake was the order of the day. Mm -hmm. So I called the mom parade mm -hmm. and then told the, our staff that. Uh, this is not the way to go. Let us now open up and talk to the boys. Yeah. So as we started talking to the boys, giving them hope, mm -hmm. giving them option, mm -hmm. encouraging them to go back to school, mm -hmm. majority of them uh, took the idea. Mm -hmm. And then they want to go back to school. Problem is just paying school fees. So nowadays, everybody is okay. <laughs> everybody wants to, to get something. Everybody and then wants to reform. when they go out, mm -hmm. so they are reformed. Yes, and okay. with the program of ODPP, that helped us a lot mm. during the COVID period. Yeah. Yes. The boys now, they are very changed and they are very happy and they want to go outside and do so many marvelous you, things. That, that's so fulfilling for you, in, I mean, as a, as a, as a head of the, the place, right? Yes. Because of the reforms. How yes. long have you been here? Uh, two years now. Two years. Yes. A good two years. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, Dr. if we don't um men to the family unit yes then this pretendant will have will keep having these boys coming here yes so uh, what do we do the, the i think is um is important that uh, we recognize just like the constitution says mm -hmm. that the, the 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 family is a primary unit of society yeah, yeah. and um if we if we take that seriously then everything will fall in place yeah. um children need both mommy and daddy we learn very different things from mom. We learn very different things from daddy. Mm -hmm. uh, daddy is the is the mentor for the boy child. Mom is the mentor for the girl child. Uh, but the other thing daddy represents is um, is the figure of authority in the home, and uh, it is it is the presence of an, an authority figure that um, will hold you to account, whether he is there or not. If you remember those days. Uh, we were told two things that were important. Uh, one is, uh, remember even when I can't see you, God can see you. <laughs> yeah, we used to believe our parents had a <laughs> yes, third eye. Yes, God, God will see you. Yeah. And then the other thing is that um, uh, I will still tell daddy when he comes. 
So you make a mistake and you still be reported. And uh, what it does to a child, it, it gives you this understanding that even in his absence, there is somebody who will hold you to account. Mm -hmm. And that is how children would then understand the law. That is how children would understand Order. God. So discipline requires that you understand there is somebody who can hold you to account, even when you can't see them. And that's why uh, daddy's role is very important. So um, the family unit uh, then is a primary unit of society and must be protected. When you now take um, everything else going forward, you go to school, you go to the community, you go to government, yeah. ideally, it is families that then form these institutions. So when we, when we look at school, we should be looking at school as an extension of parenting, is an extension mm -hmm. of family. Mm -hmm. uh, countries that have done very well, like Japan, you will find that um, what we call good manners is taught in school. Mm -hmm. They say thank you, do this, uh, clean up after yourself. Today we are going to clean up, the, 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 you know, after you eat, everybody takes their stuff and goes and keeps it away. Those little things that we were supposed to be taught at home are taught in school at a certain grade before children are even taught formal education. So when we say as a country that parenting uh, is, is the business of the parents and the teacher is just a teacher and the children are spending six hours in school every day, then we lose we lose the plot. Yeah. The idea is to look at school as an extension of parenting. Mm -hmm. Look at media as an extension of parenting. When you draw up programs, you must think about how they will influence the children and be reasonable and be, you know, you don't need um, an authority to come uh, after you telling you what you showed that this hour was not good for mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And once we go to government, then it is us as small families that choose representatives to go and take care of our business mm -hmm. so that government becomes something that is sensitive to the family needs mm -hmm. and listens to family sub policies that that strengthen and supports that system you would find that just taking that into consideration we would stop using some terms mm -hmm. when you hear somebody saying street children or street families and we all know that streets do not give birth then you understand there is something wrong with our understanding. Yeah. So we, we have children who are living on the street yes. and we should ask why. And we have families that are living on the street and we should ask why. Uh, so we, we really need um, a mindset My, a change. Mind change. Yes. Mm -hmm. change. Yeah. So the family is generally not the house where you go back to sleep, but no. everybody around you. Yes. And it was when we were growing up. It mm -hmm. was. It like and and it will yes. be daddy, it will be mommy, it will be your uncles, it will be aunties, it will be your grandfather. So mm -hmm. even in, in, in families where parents have passed on in yes, the past, where they are mm -hmm. yes, yeah. they, there was no orphan in the African context because mm -hmm. there were always your, your uncle. In fact, uncles were referred to as uh, daddy, mm -hmm. his, his uh, Baba Mdogo, yes, uh, Mama yes, Mdogo. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so there was never an orphan. Everybody was taken care of. And you see, there is nobody who doesn't come from a family. What you can say is that you don't know your father or your mother, but you were born of someone. Yeah. Yes, and, and if they are not there, then there must be an uncle, there must be a grandfather, somebody. Um, family must be taken uh, as, as a pillar of society, otherwise we'll lose the, the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. I never looked at family in that mm. wholesome mm. Mm. manner. I think mm. they're all responsible from the music that is produced exactly. to the advertisements exactly. we watch. They mm. all impact mm. a child. Yes. So it's long as, as an adult you present yourself to a child, you are parenting that child, whether the child is yours or not. And that includes the guy who is acting in the movie. Yeah. Sees this and sees an adult, yeah. and sees behavior that they can emulate. So if you show us movies about killing and killing and I get away without even being charged, then the, the thing is that what is wrong is being caught, mm. not stealing. It's, it's really yeah, distracting. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get, I get that. Mm. One quite, mm. quite a discussion. Mm. So, Carol, I have been arrested. Now I need to hear my options from you. There's paper gain and there's diversion. At what point do you tell me as a child that these are your options? Do you tell it to me directly or do you tell it to my representative? Do I get to know as a child that I have these options? All right. So, 
ODPP has been doing a lot of uh, like legal awareness of, of diversion and plea bargaining. So we have been doing it on social media, we have been going down into the counties and talking to everybody, I mean the stakeholders, um, the, the citizenry there, um, and just to tell them that there are these options available to them. So this information can get to the child through the parent who has interacted maybe with our awareness programs or uh, of course the advocates who have been training on what is diversion and plea bargaining. But even as the children uh, come to court, the prosecutor will always make it known that these are options available to the child. So you can talk directly to the child, but of course sometimes you know there's the conflict where you're told yeah. you're the prosecutor don't be seen to influence the child, mm -hmm. because uh, as a prosecutor, if I go directly to the child in court, mm -hmm. uh, who's um, accused of a crime, and I tell them about this, I might be accused of trying to influence the child yes. to, to plead <laughs> guilty. Yeah. But we, we are all in the legal profession, so we let the legal representative know, we let the mother know. So what uh, does again, like an overview, just maybe if somebody has not caught up with yes. what PIP again is mm -hmm. and what diversion is, what are these two, how do they right. So these two are alternatives to prosecution and I would say alternatives to trial. So um, they are available to both adults and children, but especially children, because we want to avoid, um, you know, the children having to go through a trial because a trial is a bit, um, you know, what I would say, straining, straining emotionally. emotionally it's, it, it makes the child really afraid of the, the system impact on the child. So if you can avoid it by all means. So these are alternatives to going through the court process. So plea bargaining is where we ask the child if they, they admit to the offence, did they commit the offence, so that is usually the first step. So if they admit the offence then that's the first eligibility for them to go through the plea bargaining. So once they say they committed the offence then we um, go through a process where we have a plea agreement. That is an ag agreement between the prosecutor and the representative of the child. Um, and we tell them that because you have agreed that you committed the offense, then we'll, you have the option of having a lesser sentence or a charge. This is a bargain to the child. This is just to encourage the child not to have to go through the trial process and because we know the advantages to that, not just to the child, because then they can go back to their life as quickly as yeah. possible. Uh, the magistrate is also encouraged to give a lesser sentence because this is somebody who has admitted to their responsibility and it saves everybody time. It saves the prosecutor time yeah. of having to prep for trial and bring witnesses. It saves the witnesses time to have to spend money, yeah. come to court and the time to give testimony. The court also is saved time. So time and resources are really saved through plea bargaining. Because at the end of the day, what you want is to rehabilitate this child. Mm. So whichever means that you can use that save time, are more effective and on, on time and even the outcome, the better it is for this child. So the, the difference now between plea bargaining and diversion is with plea bargaining, the child has to do the, the process of having to plead guilty in court and then just a, a summary of the facts of the case are given and then it goes right into sentencing. Mm -hmm. So, but the advantage over it is the court can be guided, you know, and told this child has pleaded guilty. Mm -hmm. This is an offense where he would have served, uh, been committed yeah. for maybe three years. Can you give a probation mm -hmm. um, sentence? So, you see, yeah. the child then gets off with a lesser sentence. Now with diversion, is diverting the child into programs. Okay, so we are not going through the court process at all. So we have pro um, and programs could be counseling programs. It could be they accept to go for these programs. yes, they accept to go into the programs, or they could even do a, something as simple as writing a letter of apology to the victim of their offence. So it's it, it's a way of taking the child uh, away from the justice system mm -hmm. into a program where they can get rehabilitated and develop you know be given skills and for that we we work with ngos and probation and uh, the mm -hmm. children's department mm -hmm. okay. i'm just looking at our social as we talk um, maybe something else uh, uh, Dr. Ali. Mm -hmm. 
why why is it important to discuss with these boys about love, about sex, mm-hmm. about marriage, mm-hmm. about women? I mean, why why would you want to take them through that? And maybe they are here for a totally different offense. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's important for them to be taught that? Yes, well, uh, but maybe I would like to encourage the viewers to think of uh, of masculinity like uh, a Ferrari. Okay, mm-hmm. powerful engine um, can do crazy speeds. Yeah. Uh, and um, you're going through your 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 um, uh, your testosterone is firing up. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The one thing the driver of this car needs mm-hmm. is training. Boys need to be trained how to handle the Ferrari. <laughs> uh, if that mentorship is lacking, yeah. then you don't know when to slow down, you don't know mm-hmm. when to speed, you don't know how to take the corner, mm-hmm. and you crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you if you were to think about it that way, um, the family is is uh, is for bonding and for babies. Okay, so that's the the, the key purpose. We, we 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 bond with our spouse, and we have children, and then we bring them up into responsible adults. Mm-hmm. And you find that it is in the family that we experience love, and it is in the family that we experience our sexuality. Um, That foundation about love, sex, and marriage is something that every child should know. And every, uh, especially the boy child, would need to understand what it means to love someone. Uh, It is important to understand the place of sex and that sex is good, but it can be bad if it is in the wrong context. Um, then you find that uh, the world is not helping the boy child, in that sex has become something that is being used to sell. So you, you I thought are, that affected the culture more than the boy child. No, unfortunately, it is the boy child who is trained to objectify. So you see women as sex objects, and you don't see them as human beings. Mm. Um, uh, somebody is selling shoes, but they have a half-naked picture of a woman. You're selling a car, you have the same kind of thing. You're renting a house. Mm. You're renting, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the picture the boy is being presented with is this, the, the, the woman as a sex object. Mm. Uh, we now have pornography on, on, on uh, this social stuff media. and social mm-hmm. media. Uh, we are seeing movies uh, where the star of the, the show is cheating on his wife and gets away and he's with a it. Hero. Mm-hmm. He's a hero. Uh, you have, uh, as we were growing up, we had James Bond mm-hmm. sleeping with every woman in the movie, including the enemy. You know, <laughs> I mean, and, and he's a hero. So, so the picture, the picture the boy child is bombarded with, mm-hmm. is that women are sex objects, mm-hmm. and and that is very destructive for the boy child. Mm-hmm. So, if we don't teach the boy child. Uh, about love. We don't teach the boy child about honoring and respecting women and understanding that they are humans like us and that they have a heart, they have so many things that uh, are good uh, beyond the sex, Uh, then we will not be able to have stable families. And if we don't have stable families, then we'll be back exactly where we are trying to get away from. Um, We have many people who are going into marriage today and you ask them, what is marriage, and they have no idea. So uh, that it then is. They just attained the age of marriage. They, they, everybody <laughs> expects me to get married. I'm supposed to have a family. Yeah. Uh, but w- when, when uh, you understand that marriage is basically the total self-giving of a man to a woman to each other, uh, and and it is through this fruitfulness of love that we bring in these children. Mm-hmm. And then we have a responsibility to the children that will span 24 years, 25 years before they become independent of Mm. us. And it is us who are supposed to impart moral values and help these children to to make good choices before we release them into the world. Then if that foundation is not set now, then it becomes a major problem. Mm. One of the most beautiful experiences I had here with the boys Mm -hmm. is um, When we spoke about brokenness, um, the the, the lack of mentors who could teach us the right things, uh, I asked them whether any one of them would want to be like their father. And they all said no. Okay, so why he's a drunkard, he nini you you see you can a little watch at Kiwa Gonjo, me at a you know, we were small kids when he left. Uh, you can see the brokenness. 
then uh, you take them through uh, what the responsibility of a man is, which is basically the, the, the role model, the, the gender role of a man is to protect the women and the children, is to protect, so you're the protector. You're supposed to create an environment where your spouse and your children uh, can thrive and, and blossom, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then you teach them this. So you're teaching them this as what is expected. Yeah. Then they can see where the brokenness is. Mm -hmm. They begin to see that their father was broken and they begin to understand that he was broken because his father was broken. Okay. And the question is, would you want to break this? You know, Sorry. can you stop the cycle? Mm -hmm. Then I ask them, um, how many of you have taken uh, alcohol or drugs? And they all lift up their hands. Uh, why are you here? So then the question is, do you see how much of your father you have become? Mm. So the same person who you said you wouldn't want to be like, yes, you have know. become. And why is because modeling is very, very powerful. So once they see that picture, then they feel that they can make a difference in their life, they can make a difference in their family, yes. and they would like to do things differently. Mm. And, and that's how we close yeah. the gap. That, that's yeah. good. Mm. I think again, the other issue coming mm. up in the society is that women are becoming more givers, I mean, uh, is it uh, providers, mm -hmm. than the boy child is. So there's yes. that disparity. The, 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 there is, but uh, again, it is, um, is, a, is a misunderstanding. Um, that has a, something to do with, um, you, you see, we, radical feminism and, and uh, women's rights must be separated. Um, mm -hmm. when, when you talk about providing, everybody is supposed to provide. Nobody should eat if they do not work. That is, no, I'm saying even today, we need to bring up children who understand this. Mm -hmm. You cannot go and play and come just home and ask what are we going to eat. Mm -hmm. There are dishes to be washed, there is your room to clean, you need mm. to clean your clothes, you need to do your bed. There is stuff that you must do before you can eat. Yeah. So in the traditional system, if you, are, if you are five years old and above and you are a girl, then you started following your mom for mentorship. Yeah. If you're a boy, you followed your, your father for mentorship. Yeah. And uh, the only people who were allowed not to work were those who were too small to carry stuff. Okay? This should come back to our own homes as parents. Mm -hmm. This thing of bringing up children who sit and watch TV the whole day then ask what we are going to eat <laughs> is ridiculous. It yeah. is not real life. <laughs> so people should provide and you should be able to feed yourself before you plan to have a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the difference is that uh, whereas a, a man and a woman can agree that the wife can slow down yeah. so that she takes care of the children because they really need the mother between the age of zero and yeah. three or four, you can't do the same with a man. So you can't agree with a man that you're going to work and he takes care of the children. But that, today's society, they are house husbands. <laughs> that is the brokenness. And, uh, the American that, that society. Is the, that is the brokenness we are trying to address. Mm -hmm. there, there are certain roles that must be very clear. So that we say the boy and the girl can go to school, they can become anything they want, they can become the president, they can become doctors, yeah. nurses, anything. Yeah. Both of them can do that because they are human. Mm -hmm. But once you come into the family, yeah. what mummies do, daddies can't do. And what daddies do, mummies can't do. And this is what brings the complete, complete as women, but they only represent half of human nature. Men are represent half of human nature until you bring these two together in family that's when the child sees the fullness of the human mm, person yeah. that is why it is so valuable you have mm. a lot of mm. unschooling our biases yes. as it is <laughs> yes. even for the most learned mm. so we have some comments on um, on uh, facebook and uh, in the youtube i'll just read a few uh, Chep Kane Jr. is one of our social media students right? he's always mm. on online watching us so he says, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the informative insights on the role of YCTC. And I hope in the near future, such institutions shall be replicated in several other regions in the country. So but are you able to accommodate the population from the whole country? Because he said this is the only one in the country. Yeah, they come. They do come when they are committed. And you have enough space for them? Mm, it is there, but uh, even the, the problem 
with the with the blue boys with the convicted ones no there are not very many they are not many mm, uh, because so of the diversion of cases mm. yes they are not doing very bad as a society it's yes. not packed to the brim <laughs> yes and, and 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 i wish they remain few yeah. mm. if we do a good job they should remain few we should mm. how many do you have in total the blue blue boys are convicted ones are only 34 ah, at the, the rest? moment mm. and the other ones 87 87 uh, the mandis ah. mm. eh, okay so my question today to the panel are uh, one according to the united nation i told you the student mm. according to the un conventions on the rights of the child no child shall be subjected to arbitrary or unlawful interference with his or her privacy family home or correspondence act on his or her honor and reputation but you find that today people leak out children information making them vulnerable to the stigmatized my plea is for the institution to work on this loophole who should work on this i think really it's a combination of everybody who's yes. interacting with these children because we do see in the newspapers where a report has been given and the face of the child is you know displayed yeah. there the name of the child is yeah. displayed or even in the court system so i think it is for everybody to know that uh, the children have their rights to privacy and that they should be protected from that yeah. um and that's why you see even at ODPP right from when we are drafting the charges we charge sheets we'll always conceal the name of the child we'll have the initials and we'll not disclose any other information that may tell you who the child is yeah. Yeah, so yes the UNCH UNCRC is um is one of the guiding uh, principles that we have also adopted here in Kenya So from right from the prosecutor the police the media and anybody who's interacting with the child mm -hmm. the child mm -hmm. the very rights very must be upheld yeah. do you work yes. with the media do you train them do you sensitize them on these things uh well i might not really speak of that because our office is quite big and in the counties we do interact we, we have yeah. sessions where and opportunities to to talk to them mm -hmm. but we do we do advise like if we see a caption in the newspaper we always contact like if it's yeah. the newspaper we'll call them and tell them you know this is wrong, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. you need to conceal um, the identity of the child okay yeah. uh, the society is a key tenet of the therapeutic jurisprudence eh ameshika hiyo when you send up this and they need to be diligent to be diligently enlightened on their role so does why to see why ctc and odpp have such forums with the communities and I actually wanted to ask you that Ari while you work on these children here the boys here do you, are there opportunities to work with their parents because at some point they have to go back into the society yes um there the, the are things we do but not under the odpp mm. um as um, as um, the catholic men association uh we have uh, something called the beacon boy project uh, which is mm. trying to work with the boy child uh, before they come here mm -hmm. uh and then we have um a family um uh, you know um counseling we have uh, sessions with family we have things that we try to help uh, the men to understand their role of leadership in the home and uh, the the relationship with uh, the spouses um because you know a good family will always give you a good society and if you have a good society then uh, you also have a good country uh, so it's important that um, at all levels where men and women would interact outside working whether it is in church or whatever other forums that uh, the family um, family tenants uh, are basically reinforced so in that sense we do work to strengthen families mm. Mm. do you work to strengthen families beyond this boys because you have to take them back to their communities yes you have programs for the communities as well so yes because when the boy has completed his sentence mm. we partner with the sepa those to there was a the integration program mm. so the integration program was to empower the boy we give them baba 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 so baba, baba tools mm. we also give them mechanic tools mm. and then we also do family conferences yes. before we, when we, like the, like there was one we took to moranga uh, there was it was a well of family mm -hmm. but the boy offended the family mm -hmm. so they were not ready to absorb him back. Yes. Mm -hmm. so we had to our catechist Margaret and the welfare and then there's a, a team from sepa mm -hmm. they went and start sat down with the family mm -hmm. they talked the boy also confessed that he has reformed and then later they they agreed 
and the, the atmosphere was warm and then everything went on well. And the boy went back to school. Oh, wow. Anita, I think when for us we are trying to bring in the family, uh, now how we are doing that is most of the time you would see when the child is brought into the system, they would come alone. Yeah. The, the parents, the family would be nowhere in the scene. So they come for the mentions alone, they come for the hearings alone. So we are trying to change that by ensuring for every session the child is coming, the family, the, the parents especially are present with the boy. Because most of the time one of the trigger factors of crime is neglect from the family. Yeah. And there's that detachment where the parent is feeling wound. Yet we know the, tech, the toxic family environment is what is pushing the boy out to commit the crime. So we pull them in and even the diversion programs. Mm -hmm. We are having programs so we are trying to encourage you know family coming into the rehabilitation part mm -hmm. of it so that as you work on the boy we also are dealing with the toxic home environment and making sure there is a good place for him to go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay that's good. I hope you've been uh, you've gotten some answers Chef King Jr and thank you for tuning in. Uh, Sam Karaoke thank you he says a very educative session. Sam says Dr. Wahome great to see you in the set. Wisdom definitely be present. <laughs> um, great job ODPPKE. The YCTC program is a brilliant idea and thank God I've had the privilege to be part of this program rehabilitation through counseling sessions for such children. I think he participated in the counseling session. Um, YouTube, uh, there is uh, Monica says insightful discussion. We appreciate the ODPP team involved in the CSR program. It's wonderful. Agatha says, I applaud the office for taking part in the mentorship and CSR. Linda says, great conversation. So that is just a pick, uh, just a few of those things you could pick from social. There are quite, um, quite some discussion going on. And keep discussing, of course, you'll get some responses as we go along. There's always a team on the side waiting to respond to your queries, especially the ones that uh, pertain the law. Uh, the audit is on session, uh, on standby, waiting to respond to you. I know we'll come back again uh, with Dr. Wahome and maybe now we engage with the boys properly. Is there an institution like this for girls? Um, is it Kirigeti? No. no. This is on the one. This is a prison. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. a For girls, mm -hmm. the Kirigeti is a probation. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, so I want to come to the end of this discussion. And I want to thank you so much for your insights. Quite interesting. We've learned the family unit is quite big. At Amisikujua, the family is just not the home where I go to. And of course, there's yeah. so much to learn. And unschooling our biases about the boy child and how we need to help them. And we applaud you, Superintendent, for the good job done. You're quite optimistic. I think I'd be quite uh, stressed to have all these boys under my wings. It's quite a hat to wear and, and a lot of work to do. And we applaud you because, of course, you said you have enough success stories. Maybe what I didn't ask is about mental health. Do you get to assess them before they, they, they join in, they join the institution? Is there no. a mental health assessment done? No, but uh, when they go to direct, mm. we do take them for mental assessment. Oh, okay. And if we, we, we discover that uh, there's uh, somebody, one is uh, mentally ill, yeah. we, take, we do take them to Madari of Thor. Oh, okay. Mm. okay. We do treat, treat them treat for them. Mental, to mental illness. Okay, we wish mm. you well. There's still a lot of work to do, definitely. Mm. Keep doing it. Uh, when they come out, then we can integrate with them better. And of course, engage with the, the other part of the communities, like you're saying, the families and all that. You've been applauded very well on Thank social or DPP. <laughs> and Eleni, if you're Ivio, if you're Ivio, Dr. Yeah. Home has a lot of work to do, definitely. Yeah, yes, <laughs> There's so much to do here and outside, within and without. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. And let's just hope we can have a better society and, and, and empty uh, prisons, yeah. prison places like this. Yeah. 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 Thank you for having us, Anita. Thank you so much. All right. So we've come to the end of our program. Again, we thank you for joining us on social media. We are learning every day. We are empowered every day. At least now you know what the family unit is all about. You know what the ODPP does. In as much as they are prosecutors, there's so much they do. And in as much as YCT is a prison, again, there's a lot of mentorship going on and a lot of programs that are, that are put in place to empower the boy child. And we need to empower them so that when they come back to society, they, they, they can be better citizens and of course upright. And you've had the success stories. There are those who've gone to school, they become lawyers, they still come back. And that's quite a great, uh, great, great story to tell. So we'll be back again, definitely, and now tell the story from the boy child's perspective. But for today, I'd like to come to an end and thank you so much. I want to wish you a great weekend ahead. And of course, join us next week to see what we'll be discussing. God bless. Thank you.